Hello and welcome back to my channel for my 25 week pregnancy update. weeks. I can't believe we're at this point already. So as usual today, I'm going to be talking about my symptoms these past few weeks, as well as some general updates. I have some must-haves. I promise there are better must-haves than in my first trimester recap video. And of course, I'll be sharing a bump update with you guys as well. Next week, obviously, I'll be 26 weeks pregnant. And at that point, I will be 10 weeks away from when I had my daughter. I had her at 36 weeks. So I'm starting to kind of feel the pressure now to like actually get ready and um, it's just coming up a lot quicker. So first I'll talk about some symptoms that I've had over the last few weeks. Of course there are a lot of symptoms that are still going on that I've talked about in previous videos like having to pee a lot or whatever. Stuff like that just doesn't go away it seems. But I do have some newer symptoms that have just kind of come up in the last few weeks. I think I talked in my last video about having some wicked insomnia the last little while. And just to give a little update on that, I actually am finding that for the most part, that's actually getting better. Um, I had a rough night last night, but aside from that, I've been sleeping pretty well in the night. I usually only get up about once unless my toddler gets up and needs something, but um, I'm sleeping a lot better in general. When I get to the must-haves part of this video, I will touch on a couple of things that I think are helping, but I'm hopeful that maybe for the rest of the pregnancy, I will be sleeping a little bit better. A new symptom for me in pregnancy in general is that I am now experiencing Braxton Hicks contractions. Um, I don't think I really experienced them in my last pregnancy. Maybe I did a few times and just didn't really know and it just felt like pressure or the baby moving, but this time I'm, it is definitely Braxton Hicks. I don't get them super frequently, but usually like towards the end of the day, I start to get them a little bit more, especially if I've been like a little bit more active in the day. Um, so I'm just trying to kind of listen to my body, take it easy when I start to feel them, Hi stay hydrated especially. Um, and then like when I get them, I sit down, drink some water, and that usually helps to them to like go away. They're not overly strong, but I do find them pretty uncomfortable. Sometimes they are a little bit painful. Um, they're not regular or anything concerning like that at this point, um, but just keeping an eye on them. One symptom that I've had more recently that I never really hear anyone talking about this in pregnancy updates. Um, so maybe it's not very common, but I'd be curious to know if you did experience this. In both of my pregnancies now, I have like basically like a constant nosebleed. Like my nose is bleeding all the time and it's really annoying. I'm like feel really congested. Um, so that's been pretty uncomfortable. It's not like the worst symptom I can live with it, but it's just something really annoying that I thought I would mention because like I said, I haven't really heard many people talk about this one. Now the worst of my symptoms lately has definitely been my back pain. I've been in a lot of pain, uh, mostly my upper back and my ribs. Um, but sometimes it will go into my lower back. When I was pregnant with my daughter, I did have uh, one rib that was causing me a lot of discomfort, but this time it's more like my whole back in general. It's I do feel that rib every once in a while, but um, for the most part, it's just like all across my back that I'm in a lot of discomfort. Again, it's usually worse towards the end of the day, especially if it's been like a busier, more active day. So I try to take it easy when I start to feel that it's getting a little bit more sore. I do see a chiropractor regularly even when I'm not pregnant, but I have continued to see her during this pregnancy and that's helping me a lot to manage the back pain and um, she's given me some stretches to try to do regularly. So I'm trying to keep on top of that. Again, in my must-haves, I'll share a couple of things that are also helping with that symptom. Like I said, there's always a bunch of symptoms in pregnancy, but those are the main ones in the last few weeks that have been either new or worse symptoms. Okay, moving on, I'll share some of the items that have been must-haves for me over the last few weeks. The first one I'll share is this bra extender. They just clip onto the back of your bra and just basically make one of the um, straps a little bit longer. That's been helping a lot. I was already wearing pretty comfortable bras because I was still in like my nursing bras and I just haven't moved on from them. Um, so they're very comfortable, but I do find that my um, chest is kind of expanding along with my growing belly. I was suspecting that my bra being a little bit too tight was also contributing to my back pain a little bit. I've definitely noticed a difference in like my comfort level um, in my bras now that I've been wearing them with the extenders. I'm not sure if it's helping my back, but couldn't be hurting. <laughs> Next up is another one that has been great for my back and it's just this hot magic bean bag. You can keep these in the freezer or I just microwave it for a minute or two. It just sits like right on your neck 
or I mean if you're leaning back you could slide it down to your like upper back area or whatever. I know it is important to be careful of using heat uh, during your pregnancy especially like on your belly or lower back um, so check with your doctor before using this a lot but this has definitely been something that's been helping me to kind of get through the evenings once my back starts hurting a lot. Now one thing that I think has been helping with my insomnia is this Calm Magnesium drink. It's just like a powder that you put into um, hot water and drink it almost like a tea or something. Again, check with your doctor before taking anything like this, but um, it's really tasty and I find it knocks me out pretty well. Even if it's just placebo effect, I'll take it. The only downside I find to using this is that um, I usually try not to drink liquids right before bed because I'll be up peeing all night. I haven't found it too bad for that because I basically get up at least once in the night anyways so um, I just kind of have like about half a cup of water with it. You can also get like magnesium supplements and stuff so if that is a big issue for you you could look into that instead. Another must-have for me that's helping me sleep is a lot of pillows. I've never had one of those big like pregnancy pillows or anything like that in my pregnancy. Last pregnancy I did use a body pillow which helped a lot and the then just like added other pillows in behind me or wherever I needed it. This time so far I've been using this pillow which is like a down filled pillow and so it's like really soft and moldable and I've just kind of been like shoving it in under my belly when I'm sleeping on, on my side. Recently I've also been trying to use my big nursing pillow. This is the Luna baby pillow. I'll have everything linked down below that I can. Um, and so it's great for nursing but it's also been kind of nice as like an alternative pregnancy pillow. I just started using it so I'm not sure which system I like better with all the individual pillows or using this but definitely pillows in general are a must-have I think. Other must-haves, um, water, I think that's just a pregnancy must-have in general but I'm finding more and more I have a high need for water these days now that I'm feeling those Braxton Hicks contractions so I've been just trying to keep a water bottle with me um, and make sure that throughout the day I'm drinking water when I feel thirsty. And lately another pregnancy must-have for me has been bump friendly clothing. Not necessarily maternity clothing. I've been kind of weird about maternity clothing this pregnancy. For some reason a lot of the clothes that were maternity specific that I wore in my last pregnancy I put them on this time and I'm just like I don't feel good in them. So I've been really much preferring to wear non-maternity clothing that just happens to be bump friendly. I recently did a video sharing my capsule wardrobe for this spring that is all bump friendly. So if you missed that video and are interested in seeing some of my must-have pieces you can go check that out in the description box below. I also have a blog post that has a lot more links to some of the pieces in my closet right now so if you are someone who's looking for some non-maternity bump friendly clothing then definitely go check that out. Okay moving on to some general updates of things that have been happening over the last few weeks. First up if you've seen my other videos then you would know that I have a blood condition that has made my pregnancy high risk and it requires me to go for weekly blood infusion IVIG treatments at the hospital. I have started those. I think I've had five of them now over the last five weeks. Basically I go in and I sit there for like four to five hours with an IV in me so the treatment itself is not overly taxing in terms of like what I have to do. I basically just sit there. It's been kind of a nice time to, you know, catch up on some work or do some reading, watch some videos, but the side effects can be difficult. I find basically by the end of the treatment, I've just like the life has been sucked out of me. I'm so exhausted, so fatigued. Um, I have to come home and sleep for a while. That sometimes even lasts like into the next day. Um, sometimes I still feel super fatigued the next day from it. Otherwise, I have been experiencing some migraines and headaches from it, um, which I think is common, especially in the first few treatments, but I think my body is starting to tolerate it a little bit better each time, so hopefully those symptoms start to improve. I have had another general OB appointment as well as an ultrasound, and everything looked good then. Um, they weren't able to get a good picture or video, unfortunately, this time. This baby boy is just not cooperative. He's usually crazy during my ultrasounds. I was nervous going to my last appointment because I had been experiencing all those Braxton Hicks contractions. I was starting to worry that maybe my cervix had shortened a lot as well, but it, it has shortened a little bit, but not yet to the point of being concerned at all. It's still longer than what it was when they first checked me in my first pregnancy and it was like concerning then. So it's still looking long enough at this point and hopefully there won't be any drastic changes in the next little while. I've been taking progesterone since early on in the pregnancy and so I think that that's probably played a huge role in helping with this. I haven't talked to my doctors anymore about 
um, delivery plan, like whether I'll have a VBAC or if it'll just be safer to have another C-section. So I don't really have an update on that yet, but like I said, I'm 10 weeks away almost from the point when my daughter was born, so I'm starting to think I need to really do some research and um, we'll need to kind of make a decision on that sooner than later. In somewhat related news, I talked in my first pregnancy update about how uh, I was still breastfeeding my daughter Mila, but she has now fully weaned uh, since right after I filmed my 20 week update, I think it was right after then. I had been hoping that was when she would wean because I had heard around 20 weeks, a lot of pregnant women, their milk supply will dry up or um, the milk will change. And so it kind of turns their other child off a little bit. It was a great weaning process for us. It was very smooth and on her terms and it just went really, really well. So I'm happy to have a little bit of a break now before this next baby is born and I hopefully will get to breastfeed them again as well. A lot of you have been asking me how Mila is doing, like adjusting and preparing, whether she's excited for the new baby. I think she is as much as she can understand it. Like obviously she won't really have a clue until it actually happens, but she knows enough that there's a baby in my tummy. She'll come feel him kick or watch my belly move whenever he is kicking. She's also super nurturing in general. She carries her little baby doll around like all day and takes care of it. She's so sweet to her. So I think things like that are giving me a little bit of encouragement that she'll be able to adjust pretty well. We've also started reading some books about like bringing home a new baby and stuff like that. So um, we'll keep doing that and hopefully it goes well. I don't know. <laughs> now I'll share with you my bump update. I I'm really starting to feel big now. I know I still have a lot of growing to do, but I'm at the point where it's, you know, it's kind of inconvenient when I drop something and have to bend over or it's not the easiest to put pants on. We're getting to that point. So I'm definitely feeling big. I'm basically exclusively in maternity pants, whether that's leggings or my maternity jeans. Um, I've pretty much put away every other pair of pants except for maybe the odd pair of sweatpants that just fit bigger. So that's basically everything that's been going on. As usual, I probably forgot something, baby brain. So if there's anything that I forgot to update you guys on and you're wondering about, then drop me a comment down below. I've also been sharing weekly updates over on my Instagram. So if you're interested in kind of staying up to date on what's been going on in my pregnancy a little bit more regularly, you can go follow me over there. Thanks so much for joining me for another pregnancy update video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next time.